Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel. Um, today we are solving another lead code question. So what do we pick? I wonder. Face bus. Yes, that's the question that nobody knows how to solve. <laughs> uh, actually, it's not a bad question, but I've solved it already. Yeah. Number complement. That's interesting. So, 476, number complement. Given a positive integer, I'll put its complement number. The complement strategy is to flip the bits of its binary representation. Oh, that's that's something I want to look at. Uh, just because we did uh, binary representations, just the question before, right? So example one would be input five, output two. Uh, five's binary representation would be 101 and we would basically make 010 out of it, right? And then we basically convert it back. That sounds like a very easy question, uh, but uh, I guess that's the time for us to try something like, I don't know, like a one line type solution. Let's, let's figure it out. Let's see our constraints first. The given integer is guaranteed to fit within the range, range of a 32-bit signed integer. That's uh, good to know. You would assume no leading zero bit in the integer's binary representation. This question is the same as this, I guess. Okay. Um, I want to quickly just print myself a binary representation of a number because I'm not sure um, that we are getting exactly no leading zeros like they mentioned. I guess we are not. That's that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's first have our and uh, no copying. <laughs> um, let's first have was it zero b? Yes. Our num represented in a binary format. So four bit in this thingy, right? We want to have this bit. Um, and how would you go about switching a zero to a one and a one to a zero? right that's our case um, we could do this with some uh, boolean logic I guess you would call it or just logic um, switching a 1 to a 0 would mean having it exclusive or maybe let's see or not not end now that's some interesting stuff to think about uh, we want one and one to be zero and one and something to give us zero and zero and something to give us a one. So I guess the exclusive or and let's quickly Google that. Uh, Boolean expression algebra logic. Let's see. Exclusive or. Exclusive or. So if we have a zero and we exclusive or with one, we would get the one. And if we have a one and we exclusive or with a one, we get the zero, right? Okay, so I did pause the video to, <laughs> I had so many ideas, but none of them actually worked. So it's actually like I spent a bunch of time uh, I will quickly go over to some of the interesting concepts that you may try using uh, just just to kind of see what's possible. Like the, the thing that I was actually most pumped about was you're just using the NAND gate. So basically it will turn all the zeros uh, into basically if I have the number, for example, we have a five and we know it represents uh, these bits, right? We just say five NAND five. We basically have the same bits. Uh, it will turn all the zeros into ones and all the ones into zeros. So exactly what we wanted. And actually Python supplies uh, a 
complement operation that exactly does that thing. Problem is, uh, I think it also <laughs> takes uh, the the leading, what was it called, the sign bit into account. So if I try and do something like print complement a five, it will actually return something that's um, no longer what we wanted, which would be the two, because it also uh, like I said, it also negates the, the plus sign and so it wouldn't really work. So what I come up with, I came up with uh, is a bit a bit more, I would say mechanical, but I think it's still nice. So what we'll do is we'll get the binary length of our num and the binary length of our num would be basically the length of the string that we would usually get, right? If we uh, just convert our num into a binary representation. So if we get this length um, and one for bit in in this length would basically gives a, give us a um, a list out of ones that uh, that list will be exactly long as long as um, as how many bits are in the the number that we're looking at and uh, why do we need that many ones well you can see here that if we have an int that has exactly the same length uh, in our case we would be having the 101 for the 5, so we know we are getting 3. Well, this number has 3 meaningful bits. And if we do an XOR operation, exactly uh, how we talked about before the NAND, um, we would be getting, let's see, exactly. Uh, if all of those are ones, for the zero we'll be getting a one, and for the one we'll get a zero after after we do this, right? That's why we need uh, the number that represents in a binary fashion all the ones. Uh, so and it also has to have the same length. So that's why we need the length here. Uh, we already have them like this. Let's just. Uh, join them as we've seen before we can do something like this um, probably even to be honest with you probably even just a string out of it right why not let's quickly check that um, I think we've seen that before but I kind of forgotten about it so let's have one one does this give me the string it didn't so I guess we'll be doing the weird thingy right this will give us the one one exactly so let's do this oops um, so like this so now we have what is basically the binary representation in all ones in a string format. So all we need to do is have our num and the num needs to be XORed to this result. This result is a string and we want it as an integer. So we do an int and I see it already kind of looks a bit, a bit much, <laughs> but I guess I mean, yeah, there is no native way at least that, that I found to strip away the, the, the sign otherwise it would have been a very single operation type of solution but still I think it's pretty cool so we basically have our list of ones a string of ones converted from a list and all the operations within here and we say with base 2 we want to convert it into an integer and then we store our existing number into that uh, integer and that should return us the complemented number. Let's see if I didn't miss something. Um, hmm. Let's see. 
Can you please print me? Something like this, I guess here lies our problem. Um, oh, it should be a range, right? We need to define it as a range out of the len. Now it should work, exactly. Um, what, what the warning was saying is that the len as an integer cannot be iterated over, but if you define it as a range out of this len, it should be working. And I think I messed up the parentheses here, just because this whole thing looks a bit crowded for my eyes. Um, let's see, are we, are we here? I think we are here. No, we are not here. We are here. just because we have too many functions one after the other. But we got our accepted, expected result. Um, let's have a one as well. It sounds like an edge case, I guess. And we got the result. I'm pretty confident this should be the solution. And it is. It is a bit slower, so I guess some people did it better. And also on, on memory, wow. I mean, I know why. It's our iteration here, right? I just couldn't find a better solution. Maybe some interesting, maybe some interesting Boolean logic would have made it better. Um, but yeah, I think that was my solution and I'm kind of okay with it for now. I encourage you guys to find something uh, faster and actually more readable. And uh, yeah, I think that was it for me. Uh, take a look at Boolean logic. I think it's uh, commonly used when it comes to programming. I mean, you wouldn't say it's core, like in the core importance of stuff, but I, I find it very useful for stuff, stuff especially if you want to work with pandas and masking in Python, pretty, pretty, uh, comes pretty often, uh, I found out. So it's always, always good uh, to, to know. And yeah, that was it from me. See you guys next time. Have a good day. Uh, if you like this uh, video, consider subscribing to the channel. And yeah, bye-bye.